What's up, everybody? And welcome to our live recap of uh, Apple's MacBook chip event. I don't know what we call this, <laughs> the M1 event. I'm senior editor Devendra Hardwar. I'm joined with our reviews editor, Sherlyn Lowe. Hey, Sherlyn. Hello. That was an hey. event. That was an event. <laughs> and we are, I, I feel like among the folks at Engadget, Sherlyn, we're the ones who really dive into notebooks and PCs and really explore this hardware. So there's a lot going on. In 45 yeah. minutes, Apple basically revamped its entire line, uh, gave us a new processor, the M1, or a new mm -hmm. system on a chip. And I think fundamentally is changing the way its systems work moving forward. This is a monumental shift. Do you have any broad thoughts about this event and what were your expectations going into it? Yeah, I I mean, I'll be honest. Well, hi to everyone that's watching us. Please shoot <laughs> us your questions in the chat. Yes. Um, we'll answer them today, obviously. But yeah, no. Um, I was not expecting it to be so fast. The trans, like to see <laughs> MacBooks with the new chip that quickly. Yeah, I was expecting I, like one computer, and they have. I was them expecting all. like yeah, yeah, but they have multiple. They've clearly been working on this for a while. I also am very, very skeptical of some of the promises, but mm -hmm, we'll, we'll dive mm -hmm. into that. I bet. What were your thoughts? Um, yeah, it's uh, the M1. I think just sounds like a really compelling chip, and Apple's doing a big job of a. Uh, it's only one chip, and I assume there are going to be multiple levels of power. So, right, the MacBook Air version is going to be different than the MacBook Pro version. It's probably right. going to be different than, you know, the, the what was it, the normal little Mac Mini. Baby so Mini. <laughs> I think on the MacBook Air is what I'm really paying attention to, because mm -hmm. right now a big battle being fought uh, among chip makers is just how good can you make these super light, super portable, and, you know, more inexpensive PCs. And mm -hmm. I'm pretty impressed with what they're bringing to the MacBook Air because uh, this is an it's an eight core chip with mm -hmm. four high like four very fast cores, four high efficiency cores, which yep. reminds Energy us saving. of like the Qualcomm stuff, right? Like yep. the big little Qualcomm design. Exactly. That's different well, than Intel's chips, um, or at least a lot of them, because they're typically all high all one type of speed. Intel's mm -hmm. kind of changing things up too. But what I mean, you're the Qualcomm expert, Trillin. The big difference is this chip is an ARM chip basically a mobile design that they're bringing into desktops and well yep. notebooks that hasn't historically worked out well for windows laptops Whew. but what do you think about this on from the arm side of things i mean so like as a quick recap in addition mm -hmm. to the new m1 chip right they you know apple announced the Mac macbook air macbook pro and the mac mini but also some updates to big sur and sure, sure. macOS Big Sur, you know, they first unveiled it at WWDC in June, and we still didn't get a release date. It seems like Apple was saving that date for today to be able to say at the same time that we made mm -hmm. these optimizations for the M1 chip. And some of these involve things like, um, oh, Safari is one and a half times faster at JavaScript processing now. Woo! <laughs> and you know, it's in general two times oh, more responsive on the M1 chip. Uh, and running Chrome is was one of the big problems that like ARM-based PC chips by Qualcomm right. had in the past. And Microsoft and I think Google and uh, Qualcomm have been working together to improve that process. It'll be you know fun to see how Apple's browser compares here, not only in terms of performance and speeds, but also in terms of energy consumption. Um, and actually, that's that's what I'm interested to see too, right? They made a lot of claims with the new M1 chip, with like so many the performance is one third the fastest better. cores of any right. you know any At desktop the same performance CPU level one third mm. the power you know power consumption yeah. is so performance, minimal. So they brought up performance per watt quite a bit, and mm -hmm. I think that's kind of the big thing because performance per per watt it is exactly as it sounds, right? It is the amount of power you're getting from a chip at a particular power delivery point. So. If you have a lower powered, um, if you can deliver more performance at lower power, that means better battery life. That means right, more efficient right. computing overall. So just compared to what they were showing us with the MacBook Air, like, yeah, twice the amount of performance at the 10 watt level um, compared to the last Intel chip. We don't know the specifics because the <laughs> MacBook Air had, um, I think, didn't that start with a Core M3? It starts with like a very underpowered Intel chip. Yeah. So there are yeah. very Not sure it was the Intel Air, chips. but... Yeah, yeah, the baby, the baby twelve-inch one was definitely a Core M3 starter. Yeah, yeah. So, um, but let's talk a little more about the M1, just because yes. I think it is an impressive piece of hardware. We've seen, you know, Apple is no stranger to making its own silicon. Um, they've been doing this for iOS devices for the past decade, and this thing just seems like it's an evolution of all that. It, it's a five nanometer design. 
Intel still has managed to get its seven nanometer chips out. Those are actually yeah. delayed until what, 2021 at the very earliest. Eight core GPU as well. Apple claims mm -hmm. it's the fastest integrated graphics ever in a computer. Again, we don't know what they're comparing it to. So I think maybe right. just Intel UHD Older, graphics. Right. Are they comparing it to Intel's new XE graphics, which are technically integrated, but can also be discrete? Are they comparing it to AMD's chips, which have Radeon cores on them, technically integrated onto that chip, but those are also, you know, Radeon can be a dedicated thing too. We don't know what Apple is comparing things to. I think at the very least, it's just, this chip seems very fast, very responsive, and maybe it's more of like the difference between an iOS device and an Android device, right? Because an Android but, device, yeah. you know, it's fast hardware, sure, but Android is an all-encompassing OS, right? It has to run many different platforms, many different things, whereas Apple's hardware is finely tuned for its processors. At least it seems like overall they can do that now for the Macs. That's exciting for Mac users, right? I think also, uh, and I want to quickly, you know, sure. Remind the live chat people, We I see your questions. We're going to get to them, especially that Thunderbolt question is a very good one, but we're talking about the chip now. We'll, we'll get to Thunderbolt in a little bit. Um, and uh, Wobbly Asian also made a, a point about, um, don't you just love it when you buy the last gen MacBook Air and then two weeks later, Apple reveals the new one. So Hey, I'm listen, so sorry. if you were listening to us in Gadget.com, we were telling you guys, like, just wait, just wait. But also... <laughs> Don't feel too bad yet. Like, here's yeah. the other thing too. Still don't know. I'm, it's a new I'm getting a lot of tweaks. For, I'm getting tweets from that from people too, or who are regretting their purchase. I. It's always dangerous to go with mm -hmm. first gen hardware, especially such a major shift like this. Apple seems like they've thought about a lot of the issues. Right, there is a new version of Rosetta which will emulate Intel x86 apps, so all the older Mac apps. There's a lot of new stuff happening. Um, and overall, this does seem very fast, but that in, the last MacBook Air with Intel chips is still a very good computer. It's still a mm -hmm. fantastic computer. Yeah, you and, didn't. Yeah, you didn't do yourself a disservice by no. buying that and then have a new MacBook come out. It's not like it's mm -hmm. not going to be an Apple for Apple replacement. <laughs> it seems like anyway. Yeah. Um. But really quickly, uh, one of the things they also you you, you sort of alluded to is mm -hmm. the power um, performance with the mm -hmm. new M1 chip. Not only does it allow maybe hopefully better battery life, but it also allowed for like a fanless design yes. in the new MacBook Air, if I'm not wrong, right? Amazing, amazing, yeah. That's so nuts. the MacBook Air, and we'll, let, let's just go on to the let's hardware. The, the MacBook, MacBook Air, Air yeah. is the first thing they announced. It has no fan, and that's not, you know, we've seen that in some laptops, but the last one I saw it in was like Dell's XPS 13 2-in-1 from maybe two years ago, and at that point, it was running an Intel Y-series chip, so those chips are super slow. They're just sluggish mm -hmm. as hell. And I really felt it when I was testing that computer. It seems like Apple can deliver a decent amount of performance really building off of its A-series chips without a fan. And mm -hmm. that's not, I think for most people, this is gonna be enough. This is enough computer for most people. My real worry is like, where does the M1 sit when it comes to the MacBook Pro and even the more powerful right. stuff? Like, will the Mac Pro get this eventually, maybe in a couple of years. Um, I, I feel like they've got the air settled, right? The air as has, for the past couple of years, has actually been running underpowered Intel chips. We've knocked it for that. Earlier this year, the most recent one actually got a nice spec bump and feels good, but that's not a very demanding computer, right? So a, a chip like this could fit really well in the air. It still starts at 999, starts at, $899 for educational buyers. So mm -hmm. if you're in college or have access to like school dis discounts, you can get a pretty good one there. The air hasn't seemed to change much. Uh, the screen mm -hmm. is a little better. So it has a more refined retina display. It covers the entire P3 color gamut. And I feel like just as an off offhand comment, they're like, oh, the cameras are better too. So I, I hope that means these are no longer 720p FaceTime HD cameras. At least. <laughs> at least give me 1080p Apple because those cameras have been ridiculous. But overall, like based on everything we've seen, it seems like the MacBook Air can do some decent computing work too, right? What the M1 yeah. can do is decode video, maybe support some actual video editing, maybe support some light gaming. And that's another thing too. You brought up Big Sur, Sherlin. Um, mm -hmm. Another benefit of this, um, these computers with M1 chips are going to be able to run iOS apps so iPhone apps and iPad apps, and the iPad thing alone could bring a lot more games into the Mac ecosystem because Macs have been bad at games. Even with Apple Arcade, there just wasn't really that much really 
that seemed super highlighted on Macs and gamers, you'd never get a Mac. I don't think that's going to change, but for casual gamers and for people like Sherlyn who loves her latest version of Solitaire, it's a good bump, right? Like it's a good, it's a good improvement. Do you have any thoughts about the Air, Sherlyn? Yes, so talking about the M1 powered MacBook Air, here are some quick facts from Apple. Sure. When compared to the previous generation, the M1 powered MacBook Air can export a project for the web with iMovie up to three times faster than the last generation, integrate 3D effects into video in Final Cut Pro up to mm -hmm. five times faster than the but previous generation. But the caveat is we don't know which chip the last generation computer they're comparing right. to was, so I assume it's the or worst, it be, worst, worst one. Right, yeah. it could be the base level. But this is this yeah. is the wording on Apple's uh, press release right now. Uh, you can, you know, for the first time, play back and edit multiple streams of full quality 4K ProRes video in Final Cut Pro without dropping a frame. Uh, you know, some other things like export photos from Lightroom up to twice as fast, watch more mm -hmm. movies and TV shows with up to 18 hours of battery life, and extend FaceTime and other video calls for up to twice as long on a single charge. The reason I pulled this up was partly because I wanted to look for the actual spec on the new mm -hmm. webcams. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, yeah, one of yeah. the questions that we got from the live chat, Davindra, was why mm -hmm. they're still able to use Thunderbolt. I think there's a pretty obvious answer to that. D did you want to address that? They, I mean, they kind of have to. So as much as this is an, a runaway from Intel processors, right? Thunderbolt is, it is a standard and it's actually a big part of the USB 4 standard too. So they kind of have to do it because there's so many devices still using Thunderbolt. Apple is just changing the hardware within this, but they can't, a lot of people are using Thunderbolt hard drives right now or Thunderbolt docks or external GPU docks using Thunderbolt. It's a, it's an open, it's not an open standard, but so it's, it's a standard that's widely supported. So they mm -hmm. can't get away from it. And uh, yeah, they can't give up on Intel completely, but I'm pretty <laughs> sure people at Intel are looking at all these claims and being like, I, I want to see the work, show me the work Apple of how you yeah. benchmark these things. And to your point, the, the Thunderbolt ports here on the MacBook Air will support USB 4. So yes. it'll connect to a wider range of accessories. Um, the USB other question 4 that came... and Thunderbolt is basically the same thing at this point. Yeah. Right, right, right. Yeah. Well, actually, yeah. Um, yeah, kind of. One more question that came up on, and it actually it's a quite popular question on the chat, is what apps will run? Uh, I think Marcus mm -hmm. Wright Lottie said this. And uh, yeah, so on Big Sur, um, first you have the Rosetta 2 emulator, which by the way, is not a permanent solution. Okay, mm -hmm. this emulator is not gonna be around forever. It's a stopgap for to buy developers time to port their apps over to universal versions. Um, but it seems like x64 and x86 versions will still be supported on this emulator. We haven't used it yet. We don't know how smooth this will be or how fast it'll be, whether there's an emulator lag or not, we don't know. But mm -hmm. according to Apple, some uh, apps that are native for the new you know, ARM-based Macs are already on the way, including those from Adobe. Lightroom is going to be available later this year and Photoshop mm -hmm. will be available early next. So it seems like Apple was able to get more developer buy-in than Qualcomm and Microsoft have. Oh, yeah. Um, I mean, about, Microsoft yeah. can't even get developers to buy in on building, you know, native yeah. Windows apps for the Windows Store on Intel chips. So uh, Apple has a lot of control here among the creative market. So Adobe, yeah, of course, they're going to follow with whatever yeah. Apple's changing, you know. Exactly. And also mm -hmm. Apple announced some of its own um, apps like, you know, I, I just shouted out a list like yeah. iMovie, Logic Pro, Final Cut mm -hmm. Pro, all will also work natively. So people who use MacBooks for like their workflow already are very familiar with a lot of these apps and probably already use them as part of their daily workflow. You're going to find that most of the apps stay the same. And to be fair, for Windows, it is the same thing too, right? Most of the yeah. big names have like ARM compatible versions, just that like some obscure ones, like the .exe's on the web that you want to download off of like some, your aunt's website or something. Mm -hmm. You might not be able to run that on, on a Microsoft app, but right now it seems like with yeah. Rosetta 2 on Big Sur, you will be able to run all of them. We don't know yet. It doesn't mm -hmm. seem very clear. Uh, but I did like that developer video that Apple shared where all the developers were like, I'm so excited. This it's so great. It's so compile. fast. Yeah. <laughs> it was so easy to port over. According to the um, Apple approved developer video, it's yeah. as easy as pie and doesn't require much work and yada, yada, yada. We'll see. I want to talk to some yeah other yeah. independent developers. Yeah. Exactly. But that's mm -hmm. the thing. Apple knows how important it is to reach out to developers and be like, yeah. yo, this process is a breeze. It takes, you know, 10 minutes. You don't need, you know, much work. <laughs> 
And Microsoft's most recent attempt on this front was to have a whole program designed to handhold <laughs> users and developers through the whole like compatibility process. Like, let's make sure yeah. your app's compatible. Like, that's that was Microsoft's latest attempt at yeah. making apps compatible for this platform. But so like, this whole change, by the way, is this is what Apple does, right? Because we've seen ARM-based Windows laptops before. You've reviewed several of them, Sherlyn. I don't think mm. you've ever given a good score to any of those computers. You seem to have Ooh. hated all of them. And for good reason, because Windows on ARM <laughs> support is not great. And this, at least existing in a different CPU architecture, is something Apple knows how to do. They did it pre-Intel, pre the 2005 <laughs> switch. I actually support, like I was supporting Windows, or I was supporting Mac desktops and laptops in IT during that mm. switch. It was horrific because a lot of apps just didn't work. A lot of developers had to change things. Mm. And, you know, people just rely on legacy apps all the time. There are always going to be outliers that don't work yeah. on new hardware. I don't know what the problems are going to be with this one. It seems like Apple has thought of a lot of the issues, or at least more so than Microsoft has with Windows on ARM, right? It's it's had time to look at Microsoft's mm -hmm. failures, right? I mean, this isn't <laughs> even... the. You know, the Windows on Snapdragon platform is only Microsoft's latest attempt at Windows on ARM, right? There was mm -hmm. a whole RT The debacle. first Surface RT is, <laughs> was a disaster. Wow. Yeah. And so Apple's had time to learn from Microsoft's experiences yeah. uh, and, and tweak that. I, I just think that I, you know, I to clarify, I didn't hate all of the machines that I've reviewed that were Snapdragon. PC, I've seen those. Right? Like, I've seen your scores. Has scores anything been are, above an 80? Mm -hmm. Uh... Wow, that's I can't, a hard I one. Can't even recall. Yeah, yeah, I think the Surface Pro X would probably be the highest sure. scored one because the hardware is beautiful, beautiful and most things yeah. run fine. But the emulator lag is bad. The app compatibility is awful. So mm -hmm. that's one of the biggest problems, I think, that uh, or one of the biggest challenges Apple has to contend with as mm -hmm. it moves fully into ARM based. Uh, that's it. There was another machine announced, right? At this show, a MacBook couple, a couple Pro. of years, the the 13 inch <laughs> MacBook Pro, which. Again, I really I need to I need to get my hands on this thing. I need to benchmark it because that's where you can really see if where the rubber meets the road, right? All these claims Apple is making, all the performance differences. Can this 13-inch MacBook Pro really compete compared to the faster Intel processors? I'm pretty like it wouldn't be hard to outdo Intel's Core M3, Core M5, <laughs> and maybe even some of the i5. But can it go up to the i9? I don't know. I don't know. I don't but yeah, the so. MacBook Pro. It seems cool, right? Like it seems mm -hmm. better battery life, better mics. It'll have a better camera too. Still starting at twelve ninety nine, up to sixteen gigabytes of RAM. Which, again, if you want more, you're gonna have to go to the fifteen inch. And they're not talking about that yet. So, or actually, the sixteen inch. So I wonder what the sixteen inch MacBook Pro with an M one or not an M one, but maybe with a future M processor, what that'll look like. Uh, I will say, if you want the powerhouse MacBook Pro. It's still the 16 inch, and that is still running an Intel processor. So you cannot run away from Intel, right? I think so. Uh, mm -hmm. We we mentioned developers before. Mark Dell, that's watching the stream with us right now, uh, mentions that he's a developer as well, and he said, "As a developer, this seems like a nightmare." So yeah, yeah. <gasps> Good luck to the rest of you. My IT out heart there. is just like. Mm. I don't, I don't like changes. Changes are bad because it means more work, you know? <laughs> Most people are like that. Most people don't like change, right? And so this but is, I, this is a Will challenge. users notice? I don't think end users will notice. And that's the big thing, right? Your Apple stuff will just work. Your Intel apps will just work. Fundamentally, people will buy these computers and not know that this is a whole different world than Macs were yeah. a year ago. And I, that's what Apple wants to achieve, like seamless user experience. I think at the very least, it seems like they've succeeded with that, but we really have to get our hands on these things to tell. I agree. I think there's a mm -hmm. lot we have to like wait on, you know, getting a machine in to test. Now, another question, maybe this is a bit more your alley, Davindra. Mm -hmm. A lot of people are asking why it maxes out at 16 gigs of RAM, mm -hmm. uh, why the M1 chip does that, or or some of the configurations of the laptops. I think I don't I don't know, but I think it really comes yeah. down to the types of computers that they're basing this on. Uh, a couple of notes I've seen, like uh, one of our editors point out that ARM systems tend to need more RAM than x86 systems. So hmm. that could be a potential issue down the line with these. But again, for a MacBook Air or for a MacBook Pro, I don't think many people will need a MacBook Pro with more than 16 gigabytes of RAM. Like even for general users, I think eight, eight, eight gigs is fine. If right. you want more, if you want to 
beefier amount of hardware in there, then then you move up to the 60 inch MacBook Pro, you know? So it yeah. may be a limitation in the hardware right now. Apple did develop a whole new memory architecture where it looks like the, the actual right. RAM is within the system on a chip too, at least from what I can tell. Um, so maybe that limits it to like how much stuff they can actually put in there. Maybe there will be an M2 chip next year that is bigger that can go into, you know, the actual MacBook Pro 16 inch or the Mac Pro eventually. Uh, a few, uh, we got a lot more co questions on yeah. the, um, chat. Abraham Miakil, I think asks, can you connect to mobile data? And that was one of the big things of mm -hmm. Snapdragon PCs is that LTE, you know, connectivity is built in yeah. and it doesn't sound like these or they, the M1 chip has a modem. They didn't talk about that at all, which For that, that yeah. is surprising because that is because if they, they did, yeah, that if would it be was there. They will be if there was built-in the mobile connectivity, I do feel <laughs> like, again, I feel like that's something we'll see down the line because now they yeah. have this platform where they could just plug in, oh, you want a 5G modem on this hardware? Like we could just do that next year or in a couple of years. Right now, Apple has to take stuff from everybody else to do that. Um, and that was the big push with Windows machines. Again, I never really saw people really take advantage of that. In general, yeah. I found that to be kind of a, it's something you pay more for, but you also have to pay an extra you know, a uh, monthly subscription for your data for that machine. Like there's just so much more you have to do. Whereas if you have an iPhone and you have a Mac and you're out in the wild, you could just hit a button on your Mac and tether automatically. You don't even have to set anything up on your phone. It just always shows up under your Wi-Fi. So mm -hmm. I feel like for Mac users, Apple's just saying, hey, you, you always have a hotspot. You don't need mm -hmm. this stuff right away. Maybe eventually we'll get it. But yeah, I think they're just relying on that tethering for now. And it makes sense, yeah. There, I mean, I like a built-in LTE modem just because that was the biggest, um, the best thing for me sure. with Snapdragon PCs uh, without sapping the battery life too much too. So I would love to see Apple do that. I think they also have to yeah, accommodate for battery life along mm -hmm. with all the other things they're squeezing into uh, uh, their MacBook. Speaking of things that they're squeezing into <laughs> or leaving out of these laptops, mm -hmm. uh, are there touch screens on these models? I mean, no, no. Apple does no. not do touch screens. Or exactly. at least... They can't. Again, that's I think that's one area where Windows and Microsoft's bet on Windows 8, which was not great, but Windows 8 went to led to Windows 10 and the focus on touch screens, I think is generally good. I like having that option. If I have like an XPS 13 or something and I'm just leaning back, I would rather just touch the screen, scroll around, zoom in. Apple yeah. is mainly they're forcibly separating touch screens to their mobile devices and to the iPads and iPhones. It's not on Macs yet. Who knows if it ever will, although the introduction mm -hmm of iPhone and iPad apps into these machines, you know, that's, they're laying the groundwork for what could happen over the next few years. I don't think most people will care if there's touchscreen or not. And Apple doesn't make convertibles, but maybe yeah. eventually if they ever did, day. that would be something. Yeah. The, the, and so that's the answer to your question, Manuel. Um, a lot, someone's asking a few times, uh, how about running things like VMware or Parallels on the Macs? Will M1 have any difficulties in running these? Oh, I yeah. Think, yeah, I buddy. Bet they do. <laughs> I bet they really do because those apps will run over the Rosetta emulator. And imagine trying to run an emulator within an emulator that is like two layers of slowdown and unresponsiveness. Yeah. I, I don't think it would be a good thing with the Parallels as it is now, although I'm sure Parallels as a company has been very smart. Like as soon as that Intel switch happened, they were very fast to be like, hey, right. you could put your Windows, you know, we'll, we'll give you an emulator to run Windows. If you want to run your boot camp, yeah, your bootcamp Windows partition within Parallels, you could pretty easily. So I'd imagine they're going to have a native app soon that can still, a native app that will just let you run Windows, you know, in a virtual thing. Um, I'm sure VMware will do that too, but yeah. there will be no more bootcamp. Like they actually yeah. never said this, right? But the, you can't just boot into Windows partition anymore because these aren't running Intel chips unless they do some sort of like Windows on ARM compatibility. That sounds like a nightmare for me for like God, just I would to never, deal with. Oh Lord, why no. you, anyway. <laughs> so forget uh, <laughs> that. Bootcamp was a big deal when the Intel switch happened because then people were like, oh, I could just buy a Mac and still have Windows and I right. have the best of both worlds, right? Right, and that was what Parallels was sort of offering too. Mm -hmm. uh, Omar Musa asked, uh, what does neural engine even mean? And that's like an, a yeah. neural engine on uh, mobile processors have been a thing in the last few years for phones. They are basically dedicated to performing AI tasks like mm -hmm. 
image recognition or like if your camera is doing some sort of tweaking automatically mm -hmm. of your picture for you, then that's run on the ML yeah. chip. Um, and so perhaps on the MacBooks, uh, you know, there's yeah. some sort of ML and AI based tasks well, that I think the it's, neural it's, engine is doing. It's stuff like that. It's also like organization too. Like if you go into your Apple, your photos mm -hmm. app or something, you want to search for something, the database and all the information and all that number crunching, that's a, that is like an AI process where it's automatically trying to define the objects within your photos. There is a basic level of AI happening on all of our hardware. So that's kind of what the neural engine is doing. But yeah, you know, we've seen other things too. Like um, I think some encoding bits can really take advantage of that hardware. Um, any sort of computer vision capability. So, you know, the Snapchat filters and whatnot. Um, not really a thing on Macs, but we could we could see other photo processing down the line. Yeah, let's talk about um, the Mac Mini by the yeah, way before we get too deep it. into this because yeah, it's it's a Mac Mini. It's a Mac Go Mini. Go for it. Yeah, it's a hundred bucks cheaper. It starts at six ninety nine now. <laughs> I feel like for a lot of people, this is fine. This is actually the perfect cheap desktop that I can just stick anywhere yeah. and plug yeah. a monitor into and just like use it pretty easily. We've already seen some of our editors are already super excited about this. There's nothing super exciting about the Mac mini other than the price. I think like right. in terms of the hardware you're getting, you'll get a nice zippy machine that will do a lot of this fun stuff. Um, <laughs> none of the hardware has been changed it, from what we can tell the Mac mini case, the Mac, uh, the MacBook air and the MacBook pro all look exactly the same as the current model. So hopefully there could be some design changes down the line because I can imagine they can slim down the MacBook Air even more if they had yeah. a year or two to really see how they can focus that design. I'm, uh, mm -hmm. And speaking of that Mac Mini, it kind of baffles my mind because I always think of mm -hmm. like a Mac Mini, like a desktop thing, uh, as more powerful than laptops. And they're you know putting sure, the sure. M1 chip in a Mac Mini is telling me <laughs> that. You're saying, and 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 to echo some of the sentiments going on in the chat, where people are repeatedly asking, "Can this be better than i9 10th generation? Is it faster than the Ryzen 9?" I don't know. X? We don't know. No one knows. This is literally the day of the event. Yeah, they're announcing and unveiling some. Please of Please focus stuff. on questions we can answer, or at least speculate. Um, but yeah, there there was a but, leaked yeah. Geekbench thing, right? Where I think somebody, some people were looking at that and saying, like, "Oh, it seems to be doing okay against the i9, but we don't know if that's right. real or not." Yeah. And also, like, you know, at this stage, whatever tests they're running aren't really real world. So mm -hmm. you won't know what sort of workload they're running and, you know, if Apple is optimizing anything in the background. But I will say that, like, thinking of the M1 as a chip powerful enough for the Mac Mini is sort of, like, very different for me. I, I, I don't well, know if it I was never it a powerful power. machine. Like, the Mac Mini. Right. It was a Mini, that's true. You could, spec it, you could spec it up a little, but it's right. never been a powerhouse. If they, if they were, like, straight up, we're putting it in the Mac Pro. I would have been very surprised and they're not right. doing that yet. Right. Yeah. I, I don't, mm -hmm. I they haven't done that yet. So yeah, thankfully they haven't. And I don't <laughs> know what they will do in the future. Will they be able to make a chip that's as powerful as say the mm -hmm. I nine who knows uh, someone on the, someone on the chat asked if I am the girl in the keynote. No, I am not. Yes, but thank that, you for that asking. Is, yeah. Uh, that's how it works. Trillion <laughs> is both at <laughs> Apple and adding gadget. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Anything else you but, want to mention? Because I think this is a big shift, right? <laughs> this is a big shift in yeah. terms of how we're going to be talking about Max moving Max, forward. Like yeah. eventually, there's still some will still have Intel chips. John Hodgman told us they're still selling the Intel Max, say. you know. So <laughs> that's not changing. This is just the new face of Mac. Uh, this is in, uh, this is Apple going back to a very close system where it's not working with hardware that most other people are doing, unless yeah. they kind of have to, like Thunderbolt. They have to use Thunderbolt because it, it would just be too much of a pain to come up with a whole other thing or just rely on USB 4 when Thunderbolt yeah. exists and can already do so many things. So, you know, it's a big shift. Um, not surprised to see Apple going this route, but I want to see, like, where does this leave the, the iPad Pro versus the MacBook Pro are becoming more and more similar. Are they just going to keep those two categories completely separate? Will we eventually right, see right. some sort of convertible? That always seems kind of clunky for Apple. But mm -hmm. I think the iPad Pro is pretty clunky as well, especially with like the weird case and everything. So, you know, a lot of things are changing. I think it's a pretty exciting time for consumers too, because, hey, Intel's new chips, I think are pretty good. Um, I've tested, we tested one of the Intel Evo designs, that Asus Flip S, uh, pretty great graphics uh, for yeah. an integrated system. AMD's new hardware looks fantastic. So I think the big takeaway here is that competition is good. 
everybody's looking at what their competitors are doing and trying to right. one up them. So everybody wins, consumers win ultimately. And I'm excited about that. Like forget the fanboy war, you know, it's just about <laughs> we all get good computers. I think that's pretty great. I'm with you. Uh, mm -hmm. I want to quickly just, you know, a lot of people are asking similar questions about um, is the Pro better than the Air? Some of them are worried. Mrs. <laughs> Wright is worried about a fanless MacBook Air. Um, you know, some of these things we've already uh, addressed yeah. earlier in the stream, if you want to go backwards and well, read or watch again. Fanless could be a worry if you're worried about like, yeah, what will it do Thermals. with all that heat? Do you know? Mm -hmm. The good thing about Macs is that these are solid aluminum case you know machines it's not like there's plastic hiding everywhere the case itself is a way to dissipate heat none of your current apple a series devices the ipad the ipad pro the iphones they don't have fans they're very right. very powerful uh especially compared to other mobile chips so i'm not i feel like apple has that part of the design down but yeah i would i would not trust a fanless macbook pro for series work, you know but a macbook <laughs> yeah. air it's fine Seems fine. The MacBook yep. Air seems fine. Mm -hmm. Um, Mohammed Isa Ayar is saying, I'll just wait until Engadget reviews them. Very good call. You good can call. also do another thing. On Thursday mornings, we record the Engadget podcast live on YouTube. You can join us for the live stream. Then this week we'll clearly be talking all about Apple again. Or but maybe after we'll we actually some... have some impressions. Like maybe Ooh. we'll actually be able we'll to get to play. Never know what we'll be able to share don't know what's with gonna happen. you. <laughs> yeah, but, but usually Thursday around morning. 10 a.m. Yeah, yes, 10 a.m. Thursday. Eastern. Uh, you can tune into this very page on YouTube. You know, if you hit the bell, you'll get a reminder when we're going live or just put it on your calendar. Um, but yeah, we'll be talking about that. We'll talk about our iPhone 12 uh, mini and Pro Max reviews as well. Sure. And if you have anything else you want us to talk about, send us an email to podcast and gadget.com. We'll try Probably to answer your question on air. A bit of PlayStation 5 too. Like that's the thing. That review went yeah. out Friday, PlayStation 5. Some post-election stuff because, uh, hey, uh, there, there's a new president now. That's kind of a big deal. So that's pretty cool. Yeah, Anything else plenty. from the chat, Shalom? Uh, you guys, this is your last shot to get your last final shot. questions in. Uh, Diego, you asked if they should buy a 27-inch iMac. Dunno, dunno. <laughs> I mean, dunno, dunno. If you need it, go for it. Again, we don't, these chips are just laptop chips right now. You know, yeah. we don't know when yeah. it's going to get bigger. I think you'll have to wait at least a year before it hits iMacs, before they start even thinking about the Mac Pro. So yeah. let's see how this goes. Yeah. I, I think uh, most people were, you know, are, are saying like do, doing their final thoughts now. Um, we'll mm -hmm. have more time to answer sure. more of your questions throughout this week, especially on Thursday morning at 10 a.m. Eastern. Where can we find um, you, Sherlyn, online? And you can ask me questions, I guess, yeah. on Twitter yeah. at Sherlyn Lowe. Uh, and Devendra, where are you? I'm at Devendra. And check us both out. If you like this banter, you like this conversation, check us out on the Engadget podcast. You can get that on iTunes, Spotify, wherever, and check out the live recording Thursdays, 10 a.m. Eastern. Thanks for joining us, folks. Thank you all for joining. Bye.